Hi, and welcome to Unlimited Life. This is Nicole Brandon wishing you a very happy new year and hoping that you had a wonderful holiday with your families, with your friends, and that you are now ready to launch into the new year in a whole new way. One of the greatest things about doing the show, like Unlimited Life, is that we're able to bring you the experts that can give you the secrets and the tools and the techniques to really lead an unlimited life. And I'm so thrilled by today's guest because I can't think of a better way to launch the new year than to talk about what it really means to be unlimited, to have unlimited resources, to not have barriers anymore, or anything that's going to stand in your way from actually you having the kind of life that you choose to lead, and what causes those barriers and our fears and, and how we go about removing them and really making different choices. And today's guest is Dave Phillipson, and, and he is just unbelievable and as far as being a pinnacle really at the very top of his field in entrepreneurship, in success. When I was talking to him earlier, I learned so much about his background in team and his background in strategy and his background in winning. And he weaves all of these things together to really be able to help you just open doors and and move your life in a way that you've never moved it before. So I'm so thrilled. And when we talked about when would be the right time to bring him on the show, Dave said, well, why don't we kick off the new year and really talk about resolutions and resolutions in a different way, what people are doing with their money and the choices that we're making. And so we're so grateful that today we're starting the year with Dave Phillips. And he has been a business trainer way back since 1987. He's worked with such companies as Ford, as AT&T, Remax, Century 21, Nordstrom, and so many others. And while that may seem just impressive when I'm saying this, what really stands out is the results that he gets for his clients. And you know, when you look at everything that he's done, he's able to take an individual and lead them to success. He's able to show them how to grow their business, how to grow their lives, and if it's a company, he's able to do that a trillion fold. He has been a producer for Wall Street Network where he's not only helped to produce the three minute press show, he was first contracted for the original content for the Fox Business News. He's been a mentor to CEOs, to CFOs, to COOs, and to numerous public companies, instrumental in helping to put and to keep Tony Robbins, who's a dear friend of mine, on the map. And then he turned that around, and he's done the same thing as what's known as Get Moded Seminars. He is working with a company called CEO Space, which if you've been listening to the show over the past year, you know that we've talked about CEO Space with such accolades and such high honors. CEO Space is an organization that I'm a member of, and it certainly has changed my life and the business lives and the entrepreneurial life and financial life of so many of my friends. And he's going to be talking about that, how the company came about, how he became part of that company, and now how he's able to weave that company into his own business his own life and able to help you at a much higher level. So he is just one of the geniuses of all time in dealing with success. And so today it is my honor, it is my privilege, it is my pleasure to start the year and kick the year off in really creating resolutions that will work in giving you and creating the unlimited life that you so desire and deserve. So Dave, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Nicole. And and gosh, I you know, in listening to that, I'm thinking, wow, I'm gonna have to live up to all that. Being a genius, and then what is really exciting though is if I'm able to do something a trillion fold, all I need is a ten dollar bill, and perhaps by the end of the show, you and I and all the listeners will be taken care of, well taken care of. <laughs> Well, I love, you know, when I've talked to you, one of the greatest things is that I'm able to talk to people and bring people on the show that I know have achieved incredible success and that really are at the very top of their fields. That they're, I mean, they are the, the creme de la creme, and certainly you are in that category. And very often they are people that are from other countries. I'm familiar with the work, but I've had the opportunity to meet with you, to see you firsthand, how you do business, to see your success unfold. And so for me, it's so very exciting. And even to know your background and to know that it's almost like, you know, you've taken all the breadcrumbs all the way down the path and you've picked up 
every golden nugget you possibly can of this is a key to success, this is a tool to success, this is really to lead you down that pathway of the unfoldment of an unlimited life. And I love that. It's like no stone unturned has been in your pathway. And so tell us how you began. I mean, did were you always able to help people as a kid? Did you, even when you were in school, were you able to see what other people were doing wrong and how you can sort of help them make their lives better? Or Well, I, I sure pointed it out if I saw somebody doing something wrong. I, I've always been back for getting myself in trouble with my words. I've always been able to say something to somebody that they not, may not be ready to hear, um, but I saw it as true. It, and uh, as I understand it from talking to elders, um, it started happening at an early age. In other words, uh, I've always had a big mouth, I guess. Uh, And what's uniquely funny is just recently I saw something on Facebook and I posted it to my page and it said, I apologize to any of you that I have not yet offended. Please be patient. I'll be with you shortly. (laughs) That's funny. That's great. Well, well I, I know that, I, you know, I'm, yes. I was just going to add to that that I've been fortunate enough to have people in my life that would shake me up and would share things with me that I was able to be able to hear and not be offended, whereas I think a lot of people would take these little uh, points and be offended at the critique some people call them uh, critic. Well, I call them critic isms, but they are often referred to as criticisms. And what I love, you mentioned CEO space. What I love about CEO space is we never criticize, we always plus. In other words, we'll add something to what someone has said, even if it's in a different light. And I think that's a much more positive way to look at things. Absolutely, and we're going to talk about CEO space and what the plus means, and I completely understand what you're saying. I actually had a friend and a mentor that helped me for many, many, many years, and every time that he would share information with me, he would go right for the judgment, of it, whatever was not working in my life. And I remember times when I would just be in tears and I would call him up and I would say, thank you, I think you love me, I think. <laughs> I think you really helped me today. But when we have those honest assessments of what's not working in our life and when somebody, I love the idea of actually helping something. So before we talk about CEO space, which I certainly want to talk about because if you've been listening to the show, you know how much I love CEO space. But I just want to talk a little bit about your journey and how you got to CEO space because I'm looking at this bio that says you worked with Ford and AT&T and Remax and Century 21 and the Wall Street Network and Tony Robbins. And so tell me a little bit about your path and your journey of to, to the where you are now. Well, it all started being raised in an atmosphere of being told you can't do this, you shouldn't do that, you'll never be able to do this because. And then once upon a time, and it was in the 80s, you know, the old saying, go west, young man, and so I did. I was actually chasing my heart, so I thought. Um, And I was in the financial services business. I was in venture capital. And there were a couple that lived upstairs from us. And one of the gentlemen introduced me to what color is your parachute. And that began, that was my very first exposure that I know of now I'm going to change that story in a little bit. But I'll I'll stay on the tangent and I'll jump back. <laughs> it's a great that, book, that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that was positive in mind. And the reason I said, oh, no, it wasn't, is I later realized that growing up in a small rural area near Lake Michigan, uh, you know, we were the largest town in our county um, of and – The town is 6,000. It was the largest in the county. Well, our radio in the morning was the farm farm report, 
and the weather report, et cetera. <laughs> Yet every day before the weather report, there would be two shows, and I remember waiting and listening before I would head for school. Because a lot of times, it all started when you'd listen to the radio. Um, for those that are in the uh, snow-covered areas now, you know about this. You listen to the radio to see if there are any closings, road closings, school closings, um, major thoroughfares, and anything else. And I did that. I mean, since now, since then, I've been uh, uh, lucky enough or smart enough or whatever you choose to call it to move to a warmer client, climate where it's uh, it's a little cool today. It's uh, a little bit cloudy, and that's always a bummer. But it's 64 degrees in Newport Beach. But getting back on tangent, I these two shows... One was Paul Harvey and the rest of the story. And, of course, that was always fascinating. And you wanted – Paul was so great with building suspense and creating such a positive story and turning something around. And the other was Earl Nightingale. It would be played on our little small-town radio. Both of them were syndicated shows, and they'd be picked up. So I'd listen to that. And then I just realized that three or four years ago, that that was something that was drawing me even at an early age. And that then you leap forward to uh, the 80s when I was introduced to that and then finding Tony Robbins when he was struggling to get 100 people for a weekend and helping put Tony on the map and then going and building uh, three of the four largest seminar companies. And it sounds like somebody's going to try to call in, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, wow. that one there. I love Sorry the music in the background. You know, it, it's great because I feel like your story is being orchestrated like we're watching a movie. But when you talk about and, and you say it just so easily, when Tony Robbins was struggling to get 100 people in the room and that you were able to help him or that, you know, media companies that you started on the map, these, these, these are huge things. I mean, look at Tony Robbins' success now. He is an international guru, mentor, teacher, and so something in you said, this is great information, and this can help people, and I want to help get this out there. And that's what you're doing today, is you've got this great information that you know can help people, and you want to get it out there. And so that through line in who you are is so magnificent. And it, it, it's so unique that somebody would be so selfless with their information. Because you could have just taken all this information and gone off and just, you know, done your own thing. And, and But you haven't. You've actually, you know, you're like Harriet Tubman. You go back and you collect all the people and you take them with you and you go back again and you collect all the people. And it, it's you're constantly taking people out of wherever they are, you know, that they feel imprisoned and you take them to this place of freedom in their lives and their whether that be, you know, spiritually, emotionally, financially. And so, I mean, that's amazing. Well, part of it is a, a lot of luck. And then part of it, which is unique, and I was just having this conversation the other day, um, a gentleman is asking me, uh, you know, how is it that I remember mm -hmm. uh, people and projects and connecting them, et cetera? And there was... Um, it, well, I mentioned my upbringing. My father knew everyone by family. Somebody had come over into our store. It was the second largest, uh, I'm sorry, not second largest, second oldest business in the state of Michigan. It was older than Ford Motor and everything with the exception of a little small bar about 12 miles away. Uh, mm -hmm. But he knew everybody and he mm -hmm. knew who they were. Mm -hmm by their family and say, so is your father so-and-so or is it so-and-so? And people were pretty amazed by that. But then if you link it back to his father, my grandfather, whom I never met um, because he died four years prior to my birth, my grandfather knew everyone in the county by name, which is, is to me, that's unfathomable, but that's at the same time, People say that I'm able to remember things, and, and I really don't remember. Something just hits me, and I say, hey, you two need to meet. 
Okay, so with that, I'm going to ask you then, because it, it, you're saying your grandfather knew everybody and was able to connect people, and your father knew everybody. And so, you know, so I'm going to take a, a huge jump here then, because I really think that as we're going to talk about CEO space too today, that that is one of the gifts of CEO space, is that you feel like you know everybody in the business world and the business realm and that everybody connects you to other people. And it seems like so many people, it's like you're surrounded by your grandfather and your father in this business setting. And so can you tell me a little bit how that works and what that feels like? Well, they were not connectors. They just knew people by name, which Ah. was always kind of unique. I've been fortunate enough that for some reason I've always been able to connect people to in the right way. And CEO space is magical because everybody becomes a, a connector because it, it takes the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon and reduces it down to three degrees. Either you are someone that can help someone or you know someone that can help whomever uh, you're speaking it, and then lastly is you know someone that knows someone. And it puts puts people in a position that they're they're getting the connections they need at rapid speed. They can build a thirty year network in in a week or less just because it's such a cooperative place. And if you think about it, the United States for years and years has been has been a pinnacle in the world. It's been a great country, and it was made great because of people coming from all over the world to this land and helping each other out. You look back to the early days, and the settlers would come across the plains in their covered wagons. They would stake their claim, and an entire community would come out, and they'd help them build their homes, put up their barns, sink their wells, split rails for the fences, etc., and then right off in the sunset with all the dust, dust flying and Ma and Pa and all the kids, they had a lot of kids in those days because there were a lot of chores, would be waving their hats uh, and saying thank you, And but they well knew that the next people that came into the community, they would go out and help. And to me, that's what CEO space is for business. And it doesn't matter where somebody is in their business, whether they're uh, they're thinking about an idea. We've had story after story from uh, Airborne by a second grade school teacher that came with just an idea, all the way up to big names uh, such as Ugg Boots came out of there, or um, you, you've got people that are responsible for putting Oprah Winfrey on the map, MTV. Um, uh, the uh, Act Software, et cetera, all of these people that will come to one place just to help other people. That's pretty magical. And also, that's what I love about your show. You do that for other people. You give people all over the world a, an avenue to people that they might not ever be able to connect with. Well, I so appreciate that. And I love bringing this information to people, and I love CEO space when they talk about cooperative collaboration. That's such a different way of doing business. And as we talk about New Year's resolutions, and I know that we want to talk specifically about how people can do things in their own lives and their own business to make these shifts and changes, but wouldn't it be a wonderful resolution to do business in a different way, in a collaborative way, in a cooperative way, in a way, like you're saying, where other people are helping you pitch your tents and build your city and, and drill your wells. And people and I, and I know in the time that I work with CEO Space that you look at the cloud and you look at the BlackBerry software and we look at Chicken Soup for the Soul and Airborne and you know some of the incredible products and people that have come out of CEO Space. And certainly I know that its founder, Bernard, you know, is just one of the most innovative souls on the planet, and so I would love for you to share about as New Year's resolutions, how doing business yourself, that you can make a resolution to do business differently this year, or how you can join 
a company like CEO Space and really launch it in a, a very profound way? Well, a couple of things. It was it was Buckminster Fuller that always said, and then Mark Victor Hansen says it today, that one plus one equals eleven. And when you're working in cooperation, and I'll just use real estate for example. Um, if you take, there are a lot of networks out there that they're competitive networking groups. They, oh, we only allow one of this person. There's only one of this. Well, I happen to live in a county where there's three million people. There's enough business to go around. You can accept more than one of each kind in there. And uh, what what's been proven is is um, using real estate as, as an example. If you take two realtors, even if they're in the same firm or different firms, doesn't matter and you teach them to work together, they're going to make far more than by pitting them against each other where one has to beat each other, uh, beat the other. One, you know, ends up with with top ramen while the other one is having steak or whatever their choice is. I'm vegan, so I still <laughs> use the uh, make reference just because it fits more people, but I know what I'd be happy to. Anyway, when when that is taught, there's such a stronger strength. And and you look, you know, it's often challenged to me, well, what about the athletics? Competition is good. That's not true. Even the in the early Greeks, competition comes from a, a root of a word. It means to conspire together. And we have members at CEO Space that have worked with uh, World Cup champions. They've worked with three of the last Super Bowl winners. They've worked with su- uh, World Series baseball uh, champions, etc. National Hockey League. And time and time again, it is said that what we do is we get them to forget about the other team and do the best job you can do with each other. And the other team is just out there so you can show your cooperation in, in with the other spirits on your team. And the more you reflect that, the more easy it is to win. And that's true, especially in business. It's true, especially in relationships. When you cooperate and you work together, you always, always win. That's such great advice. I mean, that really is. And I think that it makes more sense now to work together, to work on a team. Now, I know that you have a huge baseball background. And I do. In, and in looking at baseball, one of the things that I always loved about baseball is that on any given day, and you and I have talked about this, anybody can be the winner, that it doesn't matter what your position is, that you can get up and hit a home run. And the spirit of baseball and so how do you weave that teamwork and that that sportsmanship and all of these things that you know you've used in your past that you're so skilled in team and strategy and winning to be able to really have financial success and wins in business and life well i I think that's pretty simple is is that um and it you can use baseball as a metaphor, but I've used sports as a metaphor throughout my life. I've run across, especially in in a lot of the, I would say, metaphysical or, uh, I'll just say metaphysical. In the metaphysical arena, I run across a lot of people that have never been involved with sports or are not sports fans, et cetera. And they don't get it with my affliction for sports and what it is for me is sports has taught me a lot about life it teaches you how to get back up after being knocked down how to get back in there after you strike out how to play with team how to excel on your own how to do your best so others may benefit and I think it's such a, a wonderful metaphor for me to be able to see that in all forms. And then, you know, going coming back to, to uh, baseball, I went to umpire school. Well, the best the best training I've ever received in working with people was the training you would get 
at umpire school. They would throw things at you. That, uh, well, I should say they would throw situations at you. That they wouldn't throw things at you. They'd throw situations at you <laughs> and have somebody, you know, some of our instructors would come out and just be yelling and screaming, et cetera, and you had to learn how to how to align with them and the conflict, get them back in their dugout and go on with the game. And to be able to do that in a customer service arena where you've got somebody upset, et cetera, um, that's a skill. And now I'll share this too because some traveler or some people that are stuck in snowbound areas may need this for traveling. I learned this early on at the holidays. I would I would tend to plan to get bumped originally because the weather was bad. But then I realized it started working to my benefit because I would see people begin getting upset and yelling, screaming at the uh, at the folks at the gate because they wanted to get to where they were going. And I'm thinking, you know, I'll get there just a few hours differently. So I'd just be patient after they're taking all the heat and they're sweating and people are just being unkind to them. And I'd go up and I'd talk to them and say, you know, ask them how their day was going or, you know, kind of change the energy a little bit. And I would say, so do you need any volunteers, et, et cetera? And they would be so appreciative. They would go above and beyond what they were what they were offering, you know, when they were asking for volunteers. By the time I got sure. up there and just changed the energy a little bit to something a little bit more positive, let them just relax the, all the tension that they were holding on, trying to shield themselves from the vitriol from the previous person. It 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 just made a major shift, and you can see that in people's physiology too. That's great. I mean, that really is. And I love that you have that background of of dealing of having people to throw things at you. I love that, but having situations thrown at you in a way that you learn to deal with them. As you say, everything that you've done, even in listening to the weather report or listening to the radio, is choosing such a positive fashion. And well, I learned that uh, from Earl Nightingale. Earl Nightingale, one of the earliest things I remember is it doesn't matter in life what happens. What matters is what you make of what happens. Because in winter, some people freeze to death yet other people ski. And if you know any surfers, you know that surfers are get excited about tsunamis. So they're always, they're always, I, I have to share this. This is one of my grandmother's lessons. I was about five, and I think I was six years old because my little brother was four. And we were fighting over, over something we were at my grandma's house. I, and and she walked us back. She said, come with me to the kitchen. And Grandma made the best fudge. So we thought we were getting fudge, and that changed us. And she walked all the way down the hall. Grandma was, you know, in her late 80s at the time, and so she wasn't too swift, and we had to walk behind her. So, you know, that even built up more tension and suspense. And then she sits us down facing the, the refrigerator, and Grandma's refrigerator was a magic refrigerator because it held all the fudge. And she she then replaced us from sitting there to the other side of the table, and she sat in her chair. So she was facing the magic refrigerator, and she said, open the door. And boy, were our eyes just big, and we were smiling, and we were like, you know, we couldn't get past each other to try to get there fast enough. And we were going right for the phone. She said, no, no, the white one, the white wrapper. So we pull out this big, long, white thing. And you all know butcher paper. Or some may know, yeah, may sure. remember butcher paper. And we bring out this butcher paper, and it's a big block of cheese. And she gave me the cheese slicer and told me to slice a piece. So I, I sliced one off, put it on a plate. And then she said, no, do it thinner. Do it thinner. 
do it. And, and this kept on. And we didn't know what was going on. And then finally we did it so thin, it, it kind of had holes in some places because some places the blade would miss. And she said, hold it up, and what do you see? And we kept trying, and we we couldn't figure it out. Well, later in life I learned her lesson because she told us at the end, but I didn't get it until I was at least probably 15, 16, 17 years old, is that no matter how thinly you slice anything, there are always two sides. And that was a gift. And that's why I, I thought of that when talking about in winter, some some people ski and, and some people freeze in every situation. So it doesn't matter what situation someone's in. There's always going to be another side to that. Which side empowers you? That's great. You know, we had Hermia Nelson on, and Hermia is a huge philanthropist that helps companies around the world and just the most incredible heart. And she was talking about when she was a little girl that they were learning pluses and negatives, and she just always wanted to be on the plus side. (laughs) She didn't want anything on the negative side of her life. You know, but it's amazing when you look at lessons. What a great lesson that there are two sides to everything. And I'd love that that's, you know, your background and that you had that experience as an being able to go to umpire school, oh, my gosh, and learn how to do all of this. And then there's so many people that are listening to the show, Dave, that are international. And we've been talking about this company CEO space. And yeah. for those that are new that haven't heard me all these months, just talk on and on about how much I love CEO space. Can you share a little bit about what CEO space is and how people can be involved, if they, even if they're in other countries or in other parts of the world? Sure. Um, I, I could share a lot about it, too. Uh, it just stopped me because it's something I'm very passionate about. I've seen everything out there in 30 years in the development business, whether it's personal development or business development, and CEO space is the Super Bowl. It is the World Cup of everything that it is. It was Tony Robbins that first said CEO space is the Super Bowl of all training. And what it is, what CEO space is in and of itself, it's the oldest, it's the largest, and certainly the most successful organization in the world for CEOs, entrepreneurs, and visionary investors. We have members in 144 countries, so it doesn't matter. Even though the, the uh, we what CEO space holds is five free enterprise forums per year. What they are are guaranteed business growth conferences every year at Lake Las Vegas. It's about a, a, almost an hour outside of of Las Vegas, yet you'd never know that you are close to Las Vegas because it, it, there's no smoke and there's no casinos. It's just water and palm trees. It's like being on the French Riviera and being in in and around people that Instead of like most conferences where you go, you are surrounded uh, by a bunch of people that you might come across a couple later in life or you might bump into them at other programs. You might even remember your name. CEO space is like a big business family in that you're breaking bread with each other six hours a day, two hours at each meal, and you're sitting with a mentor of your choosing. Let's say you've got a book inside you and you want to learn a little bit about publishing. Well, if Mark Victor Hansen or Jack Canfield are there, you can sit at their table. They, By the way, they actually met at CEO Space 25 years ago, and the title, Chicken Soup for the Soul, came from one of those meal tables, as did most of their early authors. Lisa Nichols of The Secret, well, The Secret even started, started because of CEO Space as well. But the bottom line is you you sit with a different mentor each time, and at those meal tables, and a lot of people call them deal tables, three magic things happen. One is, is they're going around and they're mentoring you. They're asking you, what are you working on and what do you seek next? And then they're coaching you up. 
And while you're learning, everybody else at the table is learning. And then when they're when they are uh, coaching the others at the table, when they're mentoring them, you're still learning. So the whole two hours, you're you're feasting. Yeah, the food is very good, but you're feasting on knowledge. And other people are plussing one another with their business and giving people ideas on the spot. It's business transformation on the spot. And I've never seen anything like that. And I'll go over the other two things. But when, you know, most, most of the other things out there, they're upsells. Well, at CEO Space, there's no selling from the stage. Nobody's going to pitch you anything, et cetera. That's the thing There's I found was most phenomenal. I mean, just to jumping in here because I've had the opportunity to be, you know, attend CEO Space and now I'm part of CEO Space, and that people so generously share their information, their expertise, their knowledge, their time. They're not selling anything. They're sharing, and they're sharing, and they're giving, and they're giving some more. And they ache if they can't help you. In other words, if I've got somebody in my Rolodex that can help you, I'm not going to say, well, gee, I don't know you very well. Uh, I'm going to say, you know what, this uh, this person in my Rolodex, in my mental Rolodex, isn't doing me any good at the moment. Let me connect the two of you. And I don't know if it's a fit, but let's let the two of you decide if it's a fit or not. And magic happens out of that. Now, of the other two magical things that happen at the at the meal tables or deal tables, however you choose to refer them. <laughs> That's great. It is, the second thing is you're each learning what each other needs next for their business. And, Nicole, you might be the resource for me. Or you might know of someone or you know of someone that knows someone. It's just, you know, they three degrees of separation, not the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. And breaking it down to that, and it might be you just had breakfast with someone that I need to meet. Well, you'd go across the room, as you know, but the listeners don't, and and introduce the two of us on the spot. And the great thing is, is that we're not just meeting the people there, we're meeting who they know. And the connections are still being made. It might be a a brother-in-law. It might be somebody that you met over the holidays or we're breaking in the new year with. Or it might be somebody that's uh, in in another country. And you're just saying, hey, here's here's their contact. Let me uh, make an introduction. And the two of you figure out if there's some synergy there or not. And most of the time there is. And all the time people are appreciative that, they were thought about, and they just feel so blessed. So that's how your network will grow to a 30-year year network in just just a few days. I mean, I, I've got a, a great story for myself. I lived in San Diego for 20 years when I first moved to California. For the last six, I have lived in Orange County in Newport Beach area, well, there is a gentleman by the name of Ivan, Ivan Meisner. He has a, friend of a network. Yes. Yeah, Ivan, for those that don't know him, uh, started a company called BNI. I believe originally it was Business Networking International, and they just shortened it to BNI. He has uh, he started the same time CEO Space started, and he's got a pretty sizable network. Well, here in Orange County, where he was raised and has lived his entire life, and little old me from a little uh, little small rural town in the Great Lakes area, who's only lived in this county for six months or six years, not six months, uh, six years, were honored on the same stage for networking and what we did, contribution to business in Orange County, one of the more wealthy counties in the country. That isn't an attestment to me. That, to me, is an attestment to CEO space. 
So. That's fantastic. And, you know, and I know Ivan and Ivan's work in BNI is probably the largest network, you know, in the world. And I love BNI. I love what it stands for. I love the fact that they teach networking, you know, at a whole different level because it's not taught in colleges. And I love it, CEO space, that you can go up to somebody and say, hi, what's your name? And what do you do and how can I help you? And that is, and both, you know, are building relationships. And what an honor and a privilege, Dave, that you got to be on that same stage and that you were able to just catapult that, you know, from CAO space. I think that's incredible. And, you know, we have so many people listening, and as I'm looking at everybody, you know, on the line here, for people that are either in the United States or in other countries that are interested in getting involved in CAO space, how would somebody do that? Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll put that information in there, and then I'll give them the third magic thing that happens at those. Absolutely. Uh, they can what they can do. I'll give my email a couple of times. It's Dave at Global CEO Space, and space is spelled out by the way. It's not your space bar. It's Dave at Global CEO Space, and please let me know three things. Actually, two things what your business is or what you're working on or what your idea is. Because some of you may not have a business and you're thinking about getting into a business. But just share what you're working on or what your business is and what you need next. In the subject line, what I would like you to do is put uh, put the name of the radio show in the subject line. So that way I know to open it right away. And when you do that, what's going to happen is is that's going to give me an idea. I'm going to hand select a video. And at CEO Space, we've got over 2,000 hours of video. And rather than you having to belabor and uh, find the, the right one for you, I'm going to hand select something that will be perfect for you that will show you how CEO Space will work for your business. Now, I might have to choose a couple of them. I'm happy to do that. The other thing I'll do is I'll give you additional information on CEO space. I'll even send you an article where at the beginning of last year, Forbes chose CEO space in the top 10 of the 10 must-attend events for uh, 2013, the the must-attend events for entrepreneurs. Actually, they ranked us in the top five out out of the 10. And then they came. They actually came to CEO Space. They they put us in the top five with what they had heard. Then they came and they wrote a couple of times more about CEO Space. And they said, no, CEO Space isn't in the top five. CEO Space is number one, and it's not even close. I'll send you an article about you know the Forbes oh, article, so you can great. read a little bit more. And then uh, if you want some success stories, I can include that. But all I really need is what you're working on and what you need next. And if I have some contacts for you, I'll point. I'll, uh, add those for you as well. And that's Dave at globalceospace.com. And I promised I would add the third magical thing that happens yes. at those tables. And what that is, is there are appointment cards that are exchanged for in-room presentations. And there are four different forms of of in-room presentations. There are a lot of business professionals there because we offer uh, continuing education credits for doctors, for lawyers, for attorneys, for more than 20 professions, engineers even. So a professional might be doing a services presentation. Hey, I'm a I'm a CPA or I'm an attorney and I'm having a presentation on, uh, you know, the 10 best things you can do for your business in this area or, you know, what to look out for when or what to look for when hiring an engineer or, you know, things of that nature. So they'll do those kinds of things. There are seminar speakers and CEO Space is home to the top speakers in the world. And they'll do in-room presentations. Hey, I've got some new material I want to explain expose it to you and get your feedback from it. So they'll do that. Then there are people that have products, and they're doing product presentations because there are a lot of buyers at at CEO Space. If you want to get in the big box stores, the Nordstrom's or the 
Walmarts or the Targets or the, uh, you know, Canada Tire or um, any big box store anywhere in the world. We also have uh, CO Space is the home of the mass marketing boot camp for people that want to uh, expose their products to millions. We have Bob Sercosta, who was one of the co-founders of the Home Shopping Network, which is now all over the world. There are shopping channels all over the world, and he his training is used in all of those. And then there are people that are raising capital for their business. They're doing capital presentations. And you learn how to do effective capital presentations, and the people there will plus you on your presentation to make it even better. And at CEO Space, last year, in just five meetings, we generated over $3 billion, that's with a B, $3 billion in funding member to member. Because... There is a bulk of the of the organization are very wealthy, and they're coming back to tie their time, tie their brain, tie their experience, and a lot of them invest. And then investors love CEO space. The institutional investors, whether it's in, there are some angel groups, there are venture capital, but there are also institutional investors that love CEO space because there is nowhere in the world that they can go to have access to as much quality deal flow in one week. Actually, there's more there than they could fly to in an entire year. So they really love that. So there is a lot of capital flowing through that. And most people think, oh, I just need capital. I've, I'm on the, on the way. What most people don't realize is they're not yet ready for capital. And at CEO Space, they find that out and the tools and resources are there to help them get ready to raise capital and then allow the capital to be raised in future um, forums or business That's growth conferences. Now, they, 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 they also have classes, right, at CEO Space that actually teach you how to raise the capital or how to do a presentation. Oh, absolutely. Or how to raise... Yes. So CEO if you're space. brand new and you're just starting a business, this is a place for you as well as if you're a multi-million dollar conglomeration, correct? Absolutely, and that's the that's the unique thing about it is I've never seen anything like it. CEO space is 70%, I would say, education. Now, let me, now it's, I'm going to turn that around a little bit because I'm going to move something in my head around so it comes out perfectly. It's 70% deal-making, and it's 30% education. And that education includes what you know that you don't know. And if you're just getting started, you know that there's a lot that you don't know. If you're in business, you know that you discovered there's a, a lot that you you didn't know, but you knew that before. The other thing is the connections you need to make, and that's why I switched the percentages around because the connections are there to help you. And that I originally, um, that education also leads to deal-making because it puts you on a faster track. It gives you velocity and it gives you strength. And when you have both strength and velocity working for you, you go farther, faster, and with great control. And then the other, the third thing, and I think this is probably the most important part of the education process, is what you don't know that you don't know. And for those listeners that have been in business a while, they know that what they didn't know that they didn't know, that was the most costly and that was the most time-consuming. But imagine to be able to be surrounded by the top think business think tank in the world that will guide you around those potholes to be able to save you time, save you money, and and avoid having to make costly mistakes. That, to me, is invaluable. That's fantastic. I mean, the organization is not like anything that I've ever seen. And like you said, you know, millions of dollars of business is done right there, and that somebody can say, you know, I'm the person you're looking for, I know the person that you're looking for, or I will scout for you, right? I will, if it's 
this afternoon or tomorrow or a week from now or it could be three months from now, but if somebody lands in my lap or I meet somebody, I'm going to make sure that I remember this is what you need and I'm going to help you achieve that. And I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, and, and on top of that, it's weeding off negative mindsets because CEO space is by invite only. It's private. It's by invite only. And I, I would say this, because everybody that is is listening, because they, I'll call them your guests, we'll ex- extend an invite if we determine that CEO space is the right fit for them. So anybody that's emailing um, would be happy to do that. And I, I, I want to share a little funny little story here, and I'll keep it short because I know we're coming up on time, is that I was skeptical before I came to CEO space. I almost didn't go. And the reason is, is I thought it sounded too good to be true. But then I'd always hear my grandfather's uh, words, my grandfather on my mother's side. He would always say, he'd say, you know what, if something sounds too good to be true, you better check it out because there are too many people that in their own mind will say it it probably is and they won't investigate it. They won't do proper research. And today there's a lot of faulty research out there. People will just do a Google search and they remember, you know, the first thing they see. They're not uh, going deeper into something. Now, what's unique is my grandfather would always follow that saying up with another one, and that is good things do not come to those who wait. The only thing that comes to those who wait is that which is picked over by people that can recognize opportunity and act on it. And that is so true, so true. Most successful people I know make decisions quickly and they change them Mm -hmm. slowly. The most successful people I know are those that they make decisions very slowly and they change their mind a lot. They flip-flop. And they always struggle. Okay, so with that, one of the, the things that's the most enchanting to me about CEO space compared to other programs, and we're already talking about how, you know, Forbes is saying it's, number one and beyond number one. You can't even do be a, you know, better than number one, but it truly is. There's nothing to compare it to because it's such an amazing program, such an amazing place to be able to grow your business and to be able to grow your life and lead an unlimited life as we talk about. But they also have a very special sort of secret enclave of CEO space. They have a team program, correct? So they're actually taking kids so before they make mistakes, before they fall, before they fail in business, they're giving them literally the open road and the know-how of how to create business and success. And Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. The team program is called Feast. And Team Feast is, and if you, I always forget the acronym, so if you want to, I don't know if you're in a place where you can Google it really quickly, uh, so we can share with the listeners while I explain it. But Team Feast teaches us what we all should have learned when we were in junior high, and that is how to talk to adults, how to create a business, how to own the restaurant rather than work in it, and all the skills that we need, how to shake hands, you know, just little simple life skills that they don't teach in school and very certainly should. And the Teen Feast program has created more teen millionaires than any other program that I know of. It's pretty amazing. And it gives the kids the resources. And when the kids sit, they sit also at the the mentor tables. They have their own breakout sessions. They have their own teen room where some of these these powerful leaders, Bob, Proctor, um, the founder, or I'm sorry, the star of the secret, to go in and just spend time and just pour his wealth of knowledge into these teens and for them to pick his brain, to to be able to watch that happen is pretty phenomenal. Uh, but, but the bottom line is this, is the teens, they get to sit at the meal tables and there's a saying that teens go first whenever they're at the tables. 
They get a lot of attention, a lot of time, and they're making things happen. You know, a young 14-year-old that wants to create a magazine and then two years old later when she's 16, she's got a video talking about, um, you know, here, here's my magazine now and it's I'm all over the world. That's pretty impressive for, you know, teens that are starting charities. There's a little nine-year-old girl. Well, she's eight in the in the video, but she started her own charity just because she wanted to help the homeless, and it's a nationally or it's a world recognized charity. That's pretty exceptional, in my opinion. And by the way, those of you with children or teens, if you are sending me an email on that, I'd be happy to include that as well. What I would just do is just put. Uh, uh, in all caps, put the word teen in the subject line. And uh, my email again is dave at globalceospace.com. I'd be happy to send that. And I don't know if you're in a place where you can uh, do a search, but were you able to to get that, Nicole? Not yet, but if I bring it up, I certainly will share it with you. But I do okay. know that you know when great. I've talked to the teens at CEO Space. I have been so blown away, first by their ideas, because kids today have these amazing, remarkable entrepreneurial ideas of how to make the world better. And I know that there are even global kids that speak at the United Nations and say, the kids of the world think you should do this about the ozone, or the kids of the world think you should do this about energy, or you should do this about world hunger. And so to be able to have people take those ideas and help create to make them realities and saying, well, this is how you do that. This is how you set up a charity. This is how you create an online business. This is how you build this. This is how you publish, like you're saying. And to actually have guidance and people that are hugely successful, monster successful around the world as their mentors, as their teachers, as their guidance, as their enlightenment, I mean, it, it's just amazing. And to see these kids are mesmerized and listening to what's happening there and the way that they share with each other, that you're talking about sharing, you know, collaborative and cooperation and, and that they learn at such an early age how to share resources and how to help one another create success. I think it's just phenomenal. And then they're hiring their friends and they're giving their friends jobs and so these kids, uh, you know, they're making money. They've learned the value of the dollar and learned how to make money in in school. And a lot of them, when they get to college, they're making more than their college professors, which is kind of cute. By the way, um, the FEAST stands for Free Enterprise Accelerated Support Training, F-E-A-S-T, FEAST, Free Enterprise Accelerated Support Training. And... What is fascinating, too, and it's pretty funny, is that well, it's funny, but also there isn't a dry eye in the house when they have their teen graduation. We pull the kids up to, in the front of the, of the room, and they'll, right before they go through their graduation ceremony, they're given the chance to take the microphone. And you see these kids, and the funny part is, is they'll say, mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, you know, you tricked me into coming here or you forced me to come here. I didn't want to come here and you made me and I was so upset with you, but I have found my family. I shall be staying and you shall be going home. And it's pretty, it's pretty much incredible. Happens. But you also see the thing where there's not a dry eye in the house where, you know, you've, well, the teens will tell you the trouble that they've gone through, and I can't tell you the thousands of suicides that this program has prevented. Not just uh, there are some that are that are there that have contemplated in the past, but the fact that they go and and they then will prevent some of their their teen friends at home. From from committing suicide. That is a processional effect. That's pretty amazing. But when they get up there and they talk about the troubles that they had, whether it was you know being a bad kid or running with the wrong crowd or you know experimenting with drugs, you know that kind of stuff, and they they call their parents up there and they look their parents in the eye 
with the microphone in their hand, and they're saying, you know, this is where I was when I came in here, and they are making an agreement. And the meaning of agreement at CEO space is pretty significant. And they give their parent an agreement of what the parent can accept from them. I'm tearing up about it as I talk about it right now. It's it's pretty amazing. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing it. I mean, I know CEO space is in a special entrepreneurial business place you know, that you can possibly land and launch from, and I'm so excited that you are part of it, and I just, that you bring such riches to the organization. Really, I'm kind of fortunate so privileged. to be part of it because I almost said, no, it's not for me, and I don't want to be part of it now. Yeah, I have a passion for it beyond anything else because I've never seen anything like it. And it was Art Link Letters. People in the, in the United States and Canada will know Art, Art Link Letters' name, and certainly uh, in Australia they'll know his name. Art is uh, somebody that had convinced me to go to CEO Space. He said it came down to it. He was the one that introduced me to uh, the founder, Bernie Dorman. And I almost didn't go. And then I was working with Art on a potential project before he passed. And he said three things to me. He said, Dave, he said, what if CEO space is only 25% of what they say it is? He said, if it's only 25% of what they say it is, you should go. And I was in agreement with that. He also said, Dave, I'm asking you to go. And he said, on, in addition to that, you're not going to pay for it. It's just moving some tax dollars around. And... uh uh, and uh, the government's going to pay for it in that regard. So you should go. And what he said, the last thing he said was the real clincher for me. He said, besides, they've, they've got a money-back guarantee. If you go through the whole week and you don't get what they say it is or it's not for you, for whatever reason, they're going to write you a check before you even leave. I said, okay, I'm going, but I know I'm getting my refund. So I showed up at CEO Space expecting get, to get a refund, and uh, while I was there, I saw that it blew everything away that I had ever done. And, I, you know, there are some things that I would spent twenty or 30000 for for a weekend and didn't get nearly out of CEO Space, which was, you know, very – small percentage of things I'd paid much more for and you pay once and you get access for the rest of your life for free. Five times a year you could go if you chose. Many people do. The most successful as a matter of fact as you know Nicole is the most successful people that are that are there are the ones that are going every single time and the fastest growing companies are the ones that realize they can't afford to be everywhere else. And some people might say, well, that doesn't sound right. How can they do that? How can they step away from their business? But that's actually the key. You can run your business from there. But more importantly, most people struggle with their business because they're always working in their business. They never work on it. So a CEO Space membership forces you to work on your business instead of always working in it and then getting this sight from the trees, people that are outside of your industry or inside of your industry that can see things in your business that you aren't doing and need to be doing. And when you get that, you're unstoppable. That's amazing. And how did how did it begin? What was the conception and the birth of CEO Space, you know? Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. Bernie Dorman's father, Alan Dorman, was a mentor to Napoleon Hill. He was a mentor to Walt Disney, to Buckminster Fuller, to John F. Kennedy, um, and the names go on and on and on as far as famous people. And you, and you just look at all these names, you know, some of them Earl Nightingale and 
um, W. Edwards Deming and and um, but I mentioned Buckminster Fuller, et cetera. Yeah, just amazing. And, yeah, and, and people like this, W. Clement Stone, uh, they would all come over to the Dorman household in San Francisco because in those days, days international flights um, weren't as common as they were today. So it was rare that you could go somewhere. So they would stop at the Dorman uh, household in San Francisco and he would mentor them. And they'd be sitting at the table, and little Bernie Dorman, who's now the founder, he'd be crawling around on the rug, and they'd pick him up and put him on their knee. Well, when he got to be the age of about 10 years old, he would start to sit at the table and listen to them talk business. And then uh, 25, a little over 25 uh, years ago at the Chanticleer Hotel in uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, or Montreal for those of you that are listening from the snowier climbs, uh, he said to himself, he said, you know what, I, I want to put it together a group like my father had. And at the time it was called the Million Dollar Roundtable. And they started th- this uh, mastermind. There were just five of them, and the next year they said, "Hey, everybody, bring somebody back," and they did it one more time. And then for a number of years, it would it was called IBI or uh, Income Builders International, and at that time it was on uh, lifestyles of the rich and famous with Robin Leach, and it started growing, and. A few years ago, uh, because now CEO Space is, uh, as I mentioned, 144 countries, some of the Asian languages, Income Builders International did not translate. So they rebranded into something that was a little bit more universal, which is CEO Space, which is a space for CEOs. It's a space for entrepreneurs. It's a space for visionary investors. And so if someone is looking, there's three main attractions that uh, that cause people to take a look into CEO space. One is is access to capital resources to grow their business, to start their business, to take their business to a next level. The second is the increase of the skills and the abilities of the CEO or the entrepreneur. And the third is a guaranteed constant flow of new business. So if you are or you know any of those above, then certainly I'd be happy to help point you in the right direction, um, serve you in a way that uh, that can give you enough information to decide whether an investment in CEO space is right for you. And, and I'll even take it a step further. I will have conversations, whether it be by phone or by Skype, um, little coaching conversations to help them with how CEO space can work for them. And if they're really considering CEO space and need additional help with whether it's them, their business partner, maybe sometimes even their spouse, I'll even do a coaching call with one of the mentors and get the mentors that specialize in their business on the phone. That's, Dave, thank you so much. What a generous offer and what an exciting start to the new year. I mean, I can't think of a better way to begin. And as people are making their resolutions and they really want to do business in a different way and they want to grow their financial resources in a different way and they want to be successful in a way that they've never done it before. And like you said, you don't know what you don't know and it's what you don't know that trips you up and gets you in trouble and this is such an amazing resource and a place for all of the answers and all of those missing tools and techniques. And so for people that are starting the year and they're feeling stuck, is there a way to remove financial roadblocks or would you know, I know that everybody here is just going to be leaping towards CEO space right now. And is there something personal that they should do 
to start with a clean slate and to start thinking in a different way? It's a mindset shift. Money is just energy. That's all it is. And we chose paper or coin to store that energy of exchange. Hey, you've done so much for this. I'm going to offer you so so much for this. And you can't put pelts or you can't put good deeds uh, out there. Uh, well, you could. They used to do pelts, but it got to be you know that's pretty cumbersome. You can't have a pile of of uh, pelts in your wallet. So they chose paper and coin as uh, a way of measuring that. So those are just storage devices. And money has no value unless it changes hands. So the flow of money is important because this is one thing I learned when, when trading commodities is that we could push a button and money is transferred. Some people might not be traders or they might not be in the investment form, but just think of eBay or shopping online. You can type things on a screen, hit a button, and boom, a few days later it shows up at your house. (laughs) Or selling on eBay, money's coming into your account. Well, how does that happen? Think about a television, for example. In the background, I have a little uh, it's a NFL playoff time, so American football is on TV. I've got that on. But in order for that image to get here, it's, the game is being played in Indianapolis, indoors, I might say, because they're in a dome stadium where most of the con- that part of the country is snowed under. But there are particles. There's cameras that are that are basically encompassing the information, then that is all busted up into particles and it's being shot through the airwaves. And it comes through the air, it's being shot up to a satellite and the satellite shoots it down to my house, well actually to the cable company, and then wires that through to through the ground, through a, a wire, so it comes out through my screen. Now, I don't know how a TV works, but I know all that is true. And I all I need to know is to know how to turn it on and how to tune it in. I know where the power button, the on button is. It doesn't matter if it's television or stereo or whatever it is, my computer. I know how to turn it on. Now to tune it in, when you tune it in a TV, you just need a channel. Same thing with a radio station. You just need the frequency. And it's a radio frequency. You're tuning that frequency in and and most of us know from the olden days when we had to slide that little transistor across and we get the we'd have to tune it in until it gets all the static out. And a lot of people have static electricity in their mindset around money. And a lot of times it's it these are beliefs that are handed down to pe- to them by people they never met and never knew. It might be a relative that's a great, great, great grandfather that had a belief that was a mistaken belief, but it became real over time. It might be through a church or a neighborhood, and people just have those forms of things. And, you know, coming back to it, I'm going to go back to the trading days. Trillions of dollars are trading on the the, uh, financial exchanges every day. But the thing of it is, it goes through the same process as the television image. It has to be broken down into uh, little fragments of, uh, of bits of information that's transformed through wires and air. The same air that each one of us is breathing now. So we're breathing part of those particles of trillions of dollars every day. Money is flowing through us. We are just energy. Now, uh, on this call, the audience is a little bit more uh, understanding of of energy. But my brother and sister-in-law used to poo-poo me for that. And then one day, I just, it was through one of the teens, as a matter of fact. They were studying in their biology class, in their science class is what it was, in uh, junior high. And they were saying, well, we learned that there's cells in everything. In the brick wall, there's cells in your skin, there's cells in everything there is. So if that's true, 
and cells are they're created, and every part of the cell, the cell is just electrons, neutrons, and protons. Well, that's energy right there. Proton is positive energy. Neutron is negative energy. Electrons, neutral energy. Well, we're all just energy. Therefore, money is just an exchange of energy. And I've got some books I'll mention here, and people, are, if they want the books, I'll send them the, the titles of the books, too. I'm not going to send them the books. They're going to find them on their own. But one is a very basic book. There's two books that are basically the same mes- message. One is called The Richest Man in Babylon by Kaysen, or Clayson. And the other is called The Wealthy Barber. So the Wealthy Barber? Those, those wealthy Barber. I love and it. And I'll send a list if anybody just says money books. Two others, one is spiritual, one is more Christian, but they're essentially the same as well, and they're a little bit more in-depth and I'll describe the different books in a minute. One is called is called Open Your Mind to Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. And that's the more Christian book. And the more metaphysical is called Creating Money. They both say the, pretty much the exact same thing. Um, creating Money was something that was was downloaded by Sonea Roman and Dwayne Packer. And it was channeled, as a matter of fact, and they put that out there. And just read, you know, read through the books the first time, but actually do the exercises. Now, the first two books I mentioned, The Wealthy Barber and uh, Richard Stan in Babylon, the principle is this. If you can live off 100% of your income, you can live off of 90%. And it talks about tithing. And any book uh, from anyone, th- what they tell you is that if you tithe, you will prosper. And it's used using the immutable laws of the universe. If you give, that creates a vacuum for you to receive. That's another thing that people have a challenge with is, re- is with receiving. People are givers, especially, I would guess, uh, your your audience. There are a lot of givers out there. And, and uh, when it's time for them to receive, oh, no, 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 no. But what I've learned, and my mother was the biggest culprit of this. She would never allow anyone to give to her. She always wanted to be the giver. And one day it dawned on me on how selfish she was. She wouldn't allow someone else the same joy that she got when she gave. And I pointed that out to her, and, and she's been very more open to receiving. But I'm guessing that there's a lot of that out there. It's very prevalent amongst givers. Is there it so is, and self- I'm also amazed when people say, when you say thank you to somebody, and they say it was nothing. But it wasn't nothing. Right. They actually did something that made a difference, and you always think, gosh, if somebody can't receive a compliment... Then the receivership door must be closed. It must be so little if even a compliment gets blanked off. Yeah. You know. Or if I if you say thank you to me, and I tell you it was nothing, what I'm doing is I'm negating what I gave you. I want it to be a gift, and I tell you, oh, that gift was nothing. That's a bad energy exchange right there. And then this I'll say, too, on saying thank you and saying you're welcome. Pull in the eye when you say it. There is definitely a major difference in the energy exchange when you do that. And if it's over the phone and somebody's you're saying thank you to someone, just close your eyes and say it. If you're saying you're welcome to someone, close your eyes and say it but close your eyes before you say it so you can receive their thank you and imagine them looking you in the eye. It's profound what that will do for you. And it's, you know, little things that we don't think of. And the other thing that those two books talk about is talking about how to set aside monies for yourself. I've taken it to an even more extreme extent. It, um, It said, you know, set 
live off of 80%, 10% that you give away to your church or your charity or to those in need, and then 10% for retirement. Well, I've taken it even further than that. I t- chunked it down another 10% to where it's 5% for an emergency fund and another 5% for Dave money. So if there's a trip I want to go on or there's something I want to buy special for myself, I don't ever have to worry about money because I've already put it aside. And I don't recommend, unless you have a safe, putting it in, you know, under your your pillow. Don't do that. Um, And I also don't recommend putting in the same bank as your other accounts. I would say create a bank that's out of the way or credit union, and they're even better than the bank, especially with what's going on in the banks these days. But uh, things like that, so you go out of your way so it's not convenient for you to access and put those monies aside in there. If you teach children this, they'll never have a challenge with abundance. And I call it WAM. It's it's W-A-M. It's walking around money. One of the things that I do is I put a $100 bill and I try to get the cleanest, crispest I can and put it in my wallet in a hidden place in my wallet, a hidden compartment. Ladies, do this with your purse as well. In fact, if you did that with, I know ladies have a lot of purses, so it's not it's a little bit different than guys. If you did that with all your purses and you had a unique uh, hiding place for a $100 bill, first of all, you've got a lot of money sitting in your closet. But more importantly is, when I'm out of money, when I have no money, I have a $100 bill. That's an attitude shift. When you're creating wham, you're, you've got walking around money, it changes everything. You never come from need. You never come from lack because it's there. You know your retirement's taken care of. You know that if there's an emergency, you don't have anything to worry about. You're not going to stress over new tires, the, uh, the washer breaking down or the uh, the flood in the kitchen when the wa- dishwasher breaks. You just get it taken care of. You get it done, you get it out of the way. The other thing is, is if you want to go somewhere, you don't have to, oh, I wish I could go there. No, you just make the plans. And you go there. And there's also one other thing that I will send to everyone um, someone just recently posted on a blog, but it's an easy way to save money that if the listening audience set aside a dollar for this week because it's the first week of the year, next week it's two dollars, and add a dollar for every week of the year, that part's easy. And at the end of the year, they're putting fifty-two dollars away. And the week before that, the the week during uh, Christmas, week before Christmas, <coughs> they're putting fifty-one dollars in. Well, by the end of the year, they have $1,300 saved up. Now, if you started with $10 and did $11, and et cetera, from that, or I'm sorry, you did 10 20 et cetera, that's going to make it $13,000 at the end of the year. And for those that already have a bit of abundance and they really want to blow their, their prosperity mindset, Set a start with a hundred dollars and do two hundred next week. But I'll send a little graph on, on that exercise to anybody that requested. Just put Steve. just put money in the subject line. If you send it, an I'll money. give you all the books that I mentioned, and I will give you also that little table and the influences that I've been lucky enough to uh, and been blessed with being able to to come across in my lifetime, and it's Dave at GlobalCEOSpace.com. That's what I was just going to ask you, Dave. Thank you so much for this incredible information. I can't think of a better way the year. And so for everybody listening to the show, Dave is just giving you tools and techniques to grow your wealth by this time next year. Also, the most incredible organization that I've ever come across, CEO Space. And as Forbes magazine said, the number one, beyond number one place to go. And 
Dave, thank you for the offer of the generous videos and the mentorship and for taking your time today to share your expertise and your knowledge. It has been such a treat and such a wonderful way to start this show. Well, it was my pleasure. It was a lot of fun. I got to talk about those things that I love, and that is CEO space. I certainly have a passion for that and talking about helping people. So I'm willing to help anybody out there. It doesn't matter what it is. If I can help them, I will. If I can't, I'll find a resource for them, or I'll make something up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you, and I wish you the most incredible year, and I look forward to seeing you at CEO Space. Thank you. I have one last thing to say to your audience. Of course. Happy New Year! (laughs) Happy New Year, Dave. Thank you again. Thank you so much. What a wonderful, wonderful launch to this show. Happy New Year. I look forward to seeing you soon. Wow. What a great way to start the year. Okay, so CEO Space, run, 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 don't walk. It is the most incredible organization. Start your business, grow your business, create collaborations around the world. If you have an idea, if you have a team, that is the place to go from the very beginning. Like you said, have your team not work at a restaurant, own the restaurant, hire their friends, teach them those skills now. It's amazing, and they give you amazing resources in which to launch your new year to financial success. Next week, we have one of our very favorite guests in the whole entire world. Julia Michael will be here as he was here last year this time to kickstart our year as he's, we you know, the world's top numerologist. Call in. He will give you your numbers. He will tell you all about your year. He is just phenomenal, and he will teach you about the unfoldment of 2014. It's going to be an incredible year. If you caught the tail end of last week, he was talking about that this is the year of magic, that this is the year to access all the magic from the world, from Einstein and Galileo, all of the great artists, all of the great scientists, from the Mozarts to the Beethovens. This is the year to access the success and the magic, and so we'll learn how to do that. And he's just, he's incredible. Call in last time we had a lineup of guests, so make sure that you call in at the top end of the show. And he's very happy to help you, and we're thrilled that he's back to start our 2014. So a special thanks today. Just amazing, amazing information by Dave Phillipson, and thank you to CEO Space and for all of the incredible work they're doing. And for all of you, I wish you a wonderful new year. This is Nicole Brandon with Unlimited Life knowing that this particular year in 2014 will be the unfoldment of all of your dreams and we will continue to bring you the very best experts in their field to give you the success and the secrets and the tools and the techniques to lead the unlimited life, which is the life you deserve to live. Have a wonderful week. We look forward to seeing you next week with Julie and Michael.